PR Connections Radio presents... Welcome to PRConnectionsRadio.com, the voice of new media. I'm your host, Ian Kelly, and on this edition of Vegas Hockey Hub Recap, where we break down every single game of the Vegas Golden Knights 2023-2024 season, we are going to be discussing the most recent matchup that happened here in Las Vegas. And they were, and this is going to be a really interesting game, talking about breaking down, analyzing this situation here. And this is going to be a really good matchup to talk about. Unfortunately, it did not go the way that the Vegas Golden Knights were hoping for. But more or less, this was a game that is going to be memorable, but all for the wrong reasons. Now go to PRConnectionsRadio.com, the voice of new media, and check out all the content that we have on the network. We have about a dozen shows on here, including Vegas Hockey Hub. So my recommendation, go to PRConnectionsRadio.com, support the network, Also, go to our YouTube channel at PR Connections and subscribe as it helps out the network a lot. Also, go to our social media pages at Vegas Hockey Hub. We are on all major social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. We are everywhere at Vegas Hockey Hub. And if you also want to follow your host, I am right down there on social media at Ian J. Rakelli. So... This matchup, obviously, on the road, heading into the Northeast, going up against the Buffalo Sabres. Now, the last time the Buffalo Sabres and your Vegas Golden Knights took on, took on each other, this was actually back in December. And it was a good back and forth there. And what ended up happening in that game is that it was a 5-2 effort by Buffalo. So Buffalo Sabres, they won the first matchup. Now it's to go to the second matchup going into Buffalo this time and taking on the Buffalo Sabres here. Now, unfortunately for your Vegas Golden Knights, uh, one of the pregame notes that we were hopefully going to see was maybe something about the trade deadline. Is there any moves your Vegas Golden Knights were going to make at a certain point? And there is still a confirmed rumor going around that your Vegas Golden Knights and Edmonton Oilers are currently in the talks right now. They're in discussions with Pittsburgh, and they're trying to acquire Jake Gunzel. And this is a guy who really is a solid top six forward in the NHL. Now, I would be surprised if they got outbidded by Edmonton, but right now, at this moment in time, the rumor has come out about Gunzel and the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, practice notes for Vegas. Gregory Diancinko, he has been recalled from Henderson. So because of injuries and everything that's going on right now with your Vegas Golden Knights, Diancinko, he has been called up again for it feels like the fifth time this year from Henderson to Vegas. And then you have the situation where Diancinko, he was an all-star in the AHL. He's had a cup of coffee in Vegas over the last couple of months. And with Diancinko, this is a guy who, when you need a bottom six forward, he's similar to Giannis Roundbeard in a way. You know, if you need somebody who's going to be a bottom six forward, you can plug him in for a game or two, and he will work out for your organization. That is what Diancinko really is. So Diancinko, recall from Henderson. Now, when it came to this game, and you actually will talk about the starting lineup later on, the sh- later on in the show, This is a situation where he is on the bottom six. He is with your Vegas Golden Knights there. So interesting to see how he performs against Buffalo in this matchup. And really the fact that you have a bottom six right now where there's a lot of rotating parts at this point. And you really have some good bottom six guys. Michael Amadio, he's doing his thing on the bottom six. Paul Cotter is there. Brennan Bryson is there. You have Diancinko, you have Byron Fraze, you have Keen Colazar. Even Mason Morelli is doing his thing right now when it comes to how the Golden Knights are orchestrating their lineup with the Vegas Golden Knights. So overall, when it comes to this situation, um, this is this is kind of a deal where the Vegas Golden Knights have some moving parts and moving players around, and Diancinko is going to be part of that for sure. And the fact that this is going to be a guy who would be on the third line in this game. 
So we'll definitely talk about the starting lineup later on. Now, Jack Eichel, also the big news that came out, the fact that he is still on IR. So Jack Eichel, he would not be coming back against Buffalo. So unfortunately, we were all hoping that Jack Eichel would make his return and he would skate with the Golden Knights against Buffalo. His former team, he'd make a return to Buffalo. Unfortunately, that will not be happening. That is not the case here with your Golden Knights. So Jack Eichel now is going to be assuming that Columbus is the next matchup. That's a couple of days away. So hopefully Jack Eichel will go against Columbus. But if not, then it would be Vancouver on their first game when they do come back onto the homestand. Because they have that four-game road trip. They're doing Buffalo right now. They finish it off with Columbus. And then they start their homestand by going to Vancouver. So with Jack Eichel still on IR, you know, he's skating with the team. He's practicing with the team. That's good, but he's not 100% yet. And in net for your Vegas Golden Knights, the workhorse of the team this season in Logan Thompson. So Logan Thompson, this is a guy who has started more games recently. Aiden Hill has come back, but he has been shaky as of late. So Logan Thompson back in net for your Vegas Golden Knights. And Logan Thompson, this is a guy who he is dependable, and we do all see that. But what we have noticed with Logan Thompson is that when he is on it, he is indeed on it. He's at 100%. But when Logan Thompson has an off night or when the defense just does not help him out, it ends up being a situation where your Vegas Golden Knights are kind of just being forced to not rely on Logan Thompson and have everyone else kind of take the pressure off of him. So it just depends on what Logan Thompson we get in net for this game against Buffalo. And it would be really interesting and curious to see how they do. Now, this is part of the pregame notes, but I do have to mention this. The Goat Head, the Buffalo Sabres jerseys, one of the best jerseys in NHL history. We did a video talking about, in my opinion, the 10 best jerseys in the NHL. I had the Buffalo Sabres goat head in my top five. I love this jersey. I'm so happy they brought it back Pat, last season. They made a return this season. Uh, very similar to how the Boston Bruins game recently. We did the Vegas Hockey Hub recap show for that one. And they wore the all-black jerseys for Boston. Well, you have the goat head for the Buffalo Sabres in this game. So overall, I do appreciate that, and I do have to mention that it is a nice touch and kind of neat to see the goat head back with the Buffalo Sabres. Nothing against nothing against the blue that the Buffalo Sabres have. Yes, they look nice as well, but the goat head is the superior and their best uniform they've had in franchise history. Now, moving over into the first period, the Buffalo Sabres and Vegas Golden Knights and this game, there would be no penalties in the first period, but there would be some action as not even two minutes into the first period. Jeff Skinner with his 20th goal of the season. So Jeff Skinner, he lights up the lamp. He gets the hometown uh, crowd ramped up to begin the game. It would be a one nothing situation there. And it's just unfortunate when you really stop and analyze it. This is a Vegas Golden Knights team that you know started out a bit sluggish in their most recent game in the first period. It seemed like they kind of started out on the same way here. So Jeff Skinner, unassisted at this situation, but yes, 20th goal of the year for Jeff Skinner out there in Buffalo. And it's just really interesting to see how the Buffalo Sabres uh, would play for the remainder of this game for sure. Now, the rest of the first period, there wasn't, like I said, much that happened. There was an opportunity by the Vegas Golden Knights. And I do want to mention this because I thought it was really interesting what happened there. There was a shot from William Carlson that just went over the net, okay? Like, if it would have been a couple feet lower, it would have been a goal over Uka Pekalukinen, who was the goalie for the Buffalo Sabres in this game. But William Carlson did have an opportunity. Unfortunately, the puck just went too high, and it did not get past Lukanen. So that, that was an unfortunate situation there. But yes, after the first period between Buffalo and Vegas, your Vegas Golden Knights would be down 1-0 in Buffalo heading into the second period. And the second period is where the action would ramp up for both sides because uh, Alex Tuck would have a high-sticking penalty 
to begin this second period. So the former Vegas Golden Knight, the former beloved Golden Knight here in Vegas, Alex Tuck got a high sticking penalty. He goes to the box and it creates a five on four opportunity for Vegas. And what happens on this five on four opportunity? How would the Vegas Golden Knights react to a five on four opportunity? Well, not the way you would expect the Vegas Golden Knights to react to a five on four, as unfortunately, Dylan Cousins with his 13th goal of the season on a shorthanded goal. It would be a 2 nothing situation for Buffalo. So really a bad situation for Vegas to not just have two unassisted goals by the Buffalo Sabres, but to have a shorthanded goal by Buffalo. So the Vegas Golden Knights had the advantage here, and they did not execute and gave up a goal here. May a 2 nothing situation for Buffalo in Buffalo. And this would be kind of a weird turning point because after this play, the Vegas Golden Knights would ramp up and they actually would get the ball moving a little bit more. Actually, there was an opportunity in the second period before the uh, next highlight of this game that I do want to mention. Jonathan Marcheseau, there was a shot that went wide from Uka Pekalukanen that had a chance of going in. I thought it had some really good opportunity to get the puck in the back of the net it just went wide with Jonathan Marsh so but yeah so similar to the first period with William Carlson in the second period Jonathan Marsh so it was just a bit wide to not get in the net but that was an opportunity by Jonathan Marsh so to begin the second period of this game and when he wants someone to step up out of all the people that have the opportunity to step up in this game surprisingly it would be someone who only had his second goal of his career. And I'm talking about former first round pick, Brendan Bryson. So Brendan Bryson, second goal of his NHL career, assisted by Nick Waugh and Paul Cotter. So in the second period, about two minutes into the game, Brendan Bryson gets Vegas on the board here. Now, Brendan Bryson, I am still mixed on. Uh, when it comes to Brendan Bryson, I actually am going to say I am more neutral on him than anything. Uh, in terms of his game, I think there's some stuff he still needs to work on as a NHLer. But overall, I like his young energy. I will say that he does bring a certain type of situation to the Vegas Golden Knights that could be beneficial as a top nine forward, as a middle six forward in Vegas. But Brennan Bryson, good job by him. A good setup by Nick Waugh, who has just been incredible this season for your Vegas Golden Knights. And Paul Ga and Paul Cotter with a good setup there. Now, the Vegas Golden Knights, they would once again get on the board. And it would be from somebody who had an opportunity in the first period, but just went a bit over the net. But he would capitalize on this situation. And he actually would get a good chance here with the Vegas Golden Knights to execute and do what he had to do in this game. And, of course, I'm talking about a misfit. I'm talking about somebody who just hit the 20-goal mark in this organization at this point in time and somebody who is a beloved Swede everywhere all around the world and someone who the Vegas Golden Knights fan base has definitely grown attached to over the past seven seasons. Of course, I'm talking about Wild Bill. I'm talking about William Carlson as it would be a 2-2 situation there for 21st goal of the season for Carlson, assisted by Jonathan Marcheseau and Paul Cotter. So that would be a two-assist game by Paul Cotter and William Carlson to get his 21st of the season. Now, this created an opportunity for Vegas to be tied up, to get some momentum and kind of shift it over to Vegas. And I wish I could tell you that's what happened here. I really wish I could sit here and say to everyone watching on Vegas Hockey Hub Recap that this is exactly what happened. Is that your Vegas Golden Knights took advantage here. They excelled. They did exactly what they had to do in this game. But unfortunately, that's not the reality. Because after this goal right here, I unfortunately have to tell you, in terms of being fair and being unbiased, that the Vegas Golden Knights folded like a, folded like a folding chair in this game. The Vegas Golden Knights did not execute when they needed to. They had a bunch of missed opportunities. And more importantly, the Buffalo Sabres really took advantage 
in the late second and then pretty much the entire third period at this point. So, you know, for about a few minutes left in the second period, the Buffalo Sabres, they would get they would get on the board and add to the goal score there as uh, <clears throat> the Buffalo Sabres, they would get three to two at this situation. And once again, I'm not blaming Logan Thompson. I'm not going to sit here and say that he is one of the reasons why they lost here. But when it comes to the Vegas Golden Knights, the defense really did not step up on this play. And you have a situation where the Buffalo Sabres, they get on the board here and they get a guy's seventh goal of the season out there in Buffalo. So Buffalo Sabres, three to two here. And it would be a really unfortunate opportunity for Vegas as they would actually end the second period as being down three to two is after leaving the first period with a one nothing deficit. Now the third period, this is where it got really interesting. And more importantly, this is where you saw a lot of miss. Uh, you saw a lot of missed opportunities for Vegas, but more importantly, you saw physicality. More importantly, you saw some brutality, some good toughness between Buffalo and Vegas in the third period. But you also saw some goal scoring, but unfortunately, not for your Vegas Golden Knights, but for Buffalo Sabres. As about two minutes into the third period, this would be a situation where you would end up having Kyle Oposo. As Kyle Oposo, his 12th goal of the season for Buffalo, assisted by Casey Middlestat and Jeff Skinner. So the Buffalo Sabres would go up by two in the first couple of minutes of the third period. Kyle Oposo, a longtime Buffalo Sabre, he has been there for so many years, a good established leader for them, 12th goal of the season there. And then about four minutes later, a former first overall pick, defenseman Owen Power, with his fourth goal of the season, assisted by Eric Robinson and Jacob Bryson to be a 5-2 situation for Buffalo. And to say that the energy was at an all-time high at the at, at the arena in Buffalo would be an understatement. I mean, this is a Buffalo Sabres team that does have a good fan base. I know a few people out there in Buffalo who do love their team, and I will give credit. The fan base is really good. The ownership, not so much. But the ownership, you know, to me, that's the biggest problem that they have. But overall, when it comes to what this stadium is and what comes to the fans, I have always been able to appreciate what they are, what they are. And you're when you're at the um, H, uh, HSBC arena out there in Buffalo, that is really what it's like. So when you're playing this game and you're out there in Buffalo and you're at the uh, HSBC arena, it's just an incredible situation when it comes to the Buffalo Sabres and what they have there. So, you know, giving a little bit of credit to the Buffalo Sabres fan base because I do know some of them and I do have to give credit where credit is due to that fan base. I just wish your ownership actually gave more attention and didn't just spend all their time on the NFL team. But back to the actual game itself. The Buffalo Sabres are up by three goals. You're at the halfway point in this game. Would Buffalo extend the lead? Yes. Would the Vegas Golden Knights falter and continue to go down a rabbit hole? Yes. And it would actually happen by somebody who was a former first-round pick in 2017, a guy that actually could have been drafted by the Vegas Golden Knights, and that is Casey Middlestat, his 14th goal of the season. Jeff Skinner with an assist, and Owen Power assisted on this goal, so a 6-2 situation there. And by the way, Jeff Skinner, he scored the original goal. Owen Power, he scored the goal previously. So you essentially had every single player who helped score for Buffalo on this play. Middlestat, Skinner, and Power. And Casey Middlestat, he has been a you know kind of stellar middle six forward for Buffalo. This is somebody who looks like he might be a mainstay in terms of long term with the Buffalo Sabres. But, you know, Casey Middlestat, former first overall, for, former first round pick with an assist from a former first overall pick in Owen Power. And it just really shows how many first round picks that the Buffalo Sabres have gotten right. Speaking of that, by the way, former first round picks that the Buffalo Sabres have gotten to the NHL and have gone right for the Buffalo Sabres. 
with about four minutes left in the third period, the Buffalo Sabres would actually get the final touch on this game and wrap this up at 7-2 as Dylan Cousins, a former first-round pick, 14th goal of the season, his second of the game, assisted by Owen Power. So this would be his fourth point of the game with Owen Power. And this would be the finalation of this game. In terms of goal scoring, there'd be something impactful that would happen in a little bit. But Dylan Cousins, 14th goal of the season. And the Buffalo Sabres, they would get to a five-goal lead against your Vegas Golden Knights. And it would just be a situation where the people in Buffalo, they were happy. They probably went to went to the local bar, celebrated, cheered that their team beat Vegas. And for Golden Knights fans, you were just sitting there with your hands over your head, wondering what the heck just happened in this game. Now, I did mention that there is one final thing we have to talk about in this third period. And no, I'm not talking about the hooking penalty by Alec Martinez, but instead I'm talking about the fight that happened in the Buffalo Sabres game. So with about five minutes left in the third period, Peyton Krebs, the former prospect, the former first-round pick by the Vegas Golden Knights, he would slash Ivan Barbashev, and Ivan Barbashev would not take too kind to being slashed, and he would fight Peyton Krebs. So Peyton Krebs created a fight in Buffalo. He would fight Ivan Barbashev, and that is what ended up happening there. Now, I do have to give credit to Ivan Barbashev for keeping his ground and standing up for himself against Peyton Krebs. But yeah, Peyton Krebs, he obviously caused that. He did the original slash. That got him an additional penalty for Vegas. And Ivan Barbashev kind of held his ground there. So overall, with this game, with Buffalo and with Vegas, a very forgettable game for your Vegas Golden Knights. I mean, this is a Golden Knights team that's normally known for winning when it matters. And they just did not capitalize in this game. Losing by five goals to a team that's in the playoffs, I would be kind of okay with that. But losing by five goals to a team that's not even going to make the playoffs this year is disrespectful. I mean, it's a Buffalo Sabres team that is 29, 28, and 4 at this point in time. I mean, they're barely uh, barely struggling to survive. They're barely holding above water at this point. So getting into this actual analysis here and kind of breaking down the team stats with the Buffalo Sabres and Vegas Golden Knights, getting into the team stats of it. So you had 35 shots on net for Buffalo compared to only the 24 the Vegas Golden Knights had. Vegas Golden Knights out hit Buffalo 37 to 29 and the Buffalo Sabres had nine penalty minutes. Vegas had seven. So, you know, Vegas Golden Knights, they only had really two penalties in this game. Buffalo ended up having three. Now, Vegas Golden Knights did not capitalize at all on the power play, as this was a situation where when it came to the power play, Vegas Golden Knights, they were 50-50. Buffalo Sabres, they were one for one on the power play. So the penalty kill did not step up for Vegas in this situation. The block shots for Vegas, this is where they excelled mightily in this game. Shout out to Alec Martinez with seven block shots in this game. And the Vegas Golden Knights ended up having a total of 27 block shots compared to only 10 for Buffalo. In the takeaway column, Vegas had four more than Buffalo, seven to three. And the player of the game, I have to give to Brennan Bryce on. He was one of the only notable highlights in this game. Second career goal in the NHL as a middle six forward. And overall, when it comes to this roster and the way it has been set up, I do appreciate what they have done at this point. And more importantly, when it comes to the Vegas Golden Knights, Brennan Bryson, he's becoming a more of a regular with the Vegas Golden Knights. And I can appreciate that on that end with your Vegas Golden Knights. So, you know, when it comes to Vegas, I really sit here and analyze what they are doing. And this is just an organization that really is trying to build a lot of stuff right now. Uh, Bram Bryson looks like one of the future members, a few stars of this team moving forward. And the Vegas Golden Knights are going to try to push into that middle six. 
to Brandon Bryson, player of the game. Now, this is the win-loss record for your Vegas Golden Knights at this point, still battling in the Pacific Division. Now, this is a Vegas Golden Knights team who, once again, you're taking on Columbus in a few days. Then you have Vancouver and Detroit in a few games at T-Mobile Arena at home in Las Vegas. So these games are really starting to matter at this point. I mean, you only have a few, you really only have a few games left before the trade deadline. And then you have about 20 games to really get yourself situated and into a certain motion with your Vegas Golden Knights. And this is going to be where the Vegas Golden Knights really need to excel and do great for Vegas at this point. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of the show that I would break down the starting lineup. I waited till the late end of the show for a reason, because the starting lineup for your Vegas Golden Knights, you had Ivan Barbashev, Nick Waugh, and Jonathan Marcheseau on line one. This has been the starting lineup ever since Jack Eichel did get hurt in Boston. So Nick Waugh, it did make sense to have Barbashev and Marcheseau there. Um, you also had a situation where Chandler Stevenson and William Carlson being on the same line there. And then you have Michael Amadio with them. So you have Michael Amadio, William Carlson, and Chandler Stevenson on line two. On line three, you have Paul Cotter, Brennan Bryson, and Gregory Diancinco. And then line four, you have Mason Morelli, King Colazar, and Byron Fraze. So that fourth line of Morelli, Fraze, and Colazar has been kind of the same ever since William Carrier went down with an injury. They called up Mason Morelli. He's been a good guy to be on the fourth line winger. Byron Fraze, a veteran at this point, being on the center at the fourth line. And then on the third line, you do have the young guys of sorts. I did mention you have Paul Cotter, who's a young guy on that third line. You have Brendan Bryson, someone who they can use at a winger or at a center position. And then Gregory Diancinco, who they called up from Henderson, and he would be filling that spot on the third line. So overall, your bottom six consists of a lot of AHL guys. Bryson, Diancinco, Morelli, Fraze. I mean, Colazar and Cotter are the two regular guys on the bottom six. But let's not forget, Paul Cotter is still a young guy at this stage, and Keen Colazar has been a fourth-line winger almost his entire time in Vegas. So the bottom six, that's the stage right there with your Vegas Golden Knights. Defensively, not much has changed. You have Haig and White Cloud, Martinez and Petrangelo, McNabb and Theodore. And then you had Logan Thompson, who unfortunately had a really bad night, seven goals allowed against Buffalo. Now, as we got about two minutes left, I do want to plug something real quick. I am a writer for the sportsangle.com and I've wrote an article uh, I've wrote articles about the Vegas Golden Knights in the past so I recommend if you have time go go to www.thesportsangle.com and read all the hockey articles I have on there. And until next time, I'm your host Ian Rakelli. This is Vegas Hockey Hub. Continue watching hockey, go support junior hockey and go Knights go.